Hello everybody, welcome to this video. Today we're gonna to be ranking all of the traits in Fallout New Vegas, which I really love that they added the traits to New Vegas. There was traits in the original Fallout games in Fallout 1, 2, and Tactics. I'm not sure if there was any others that had them. So in every playthrough, you can get two traits and you can actually reroll these traits twice at two different times throughout the entirety of the game if you ever want to do that. So for our very first trait, we have Built to Destroy. Built to Destroy is honestly a pretty cool trait. This one gives you 3% more crit chance with every single weapon. However, every weapon decays 15% faster. So you break every weapon a bit quicker. And this isn't necessarily a huge deal. The downsides don't always offset the upsides because 3% more crit chance is really nice. Hitting crits with almost any weapon is good unless you're going to run a like melee build with a chainsaw or with a thermic lance or something that doesn't have crits on it um, or has it, it technically does have crits. It's just very low. So then it doesn't matter so much. But most other weapons generally hit just as hard with their base damage as their crit damage, sometimes even more so than that. And this one's pretty good. I'm going to put this one up into A tier. I think that it's a solid all-around trait. Claustrophobic makes it so you get plus one to all special stats so long as you're outside, but you get minus one to all of your special stats when you're indoors. This one's kind of a whatever one, in my opinion. I, I really don't take it that much. It kind of works if you're going for like a perfect character to try to get like 10 in everything. This can kind of cheat it to make it so you get another one. It can be pretty useful early on. And generally, a lot of what you're going to be doing is outdoors, unless it's something like speech skill checks, then it's not as useful. There are certain places in the game too where some of the more difficult enemies are, like there's a Deathclaw Cave, Cazador Cave. I'm gonna put this one in a C tier. I don't think it's really a plus or a minus. Up um, next is Early Bird. And Early Bird's kind of an interesting one too. This one gives you plus two to all of your special stats. So long as it's between 6 a.m. and 12 p.m. So you have a six hour window where you get plus two to all your special stats. That's a pretty sizable bonus and it can be useful for potentially getting skill checks just out of the way at certain times. But then the downside of this is you get minus one to all of your special stats between 6 p.m. and 6 a.m. So there's a six hour window where you get plus two, a six hour window where you get no bonuses, no minuses, and then a 12 hour window where you are going negative. That can be kind of rough, but you can always wait in New Vegas, even if you want to play on very hard and hardcore. This can be pretty useful, so long as you're managing your time just fine. So I'm going to put this one into B tier. I think it's actually pretty decent. And again, if you did want to go with a perfect character, you could actually take both of these and then have plus three, so long as you're outside and it's early in the morning. You can also get kind of a bonus from early bird if you didn't want to go with a full uh, luck build. And you just wanted to have extra luck during like those casino ones because you could take that and the naughty nightwear and I think that would get you plus five luck. And then you could have like the luck implant which would get you another plus one. So that'd be six luck in total so you could have four luck and go up to ten at least if I'm remembering right. Kamikaze gives you ten more action points. However you lose two damage threshold and you also lose 15% damage resist. That is pretty rough if you're playing on the higher difficulties. This one can be all right if you want to go with a full VATS build. And that would really be the only reason to be taking this. 10 action points isn't a whole ton. You can get some other VATS related perks that do help you. If you just want to stack the most amount of VATS though, this definitely helps for that. Probably wouldn't be one of the things that I'd go to if you were playing on uh, very hard. Unless again, you're just going for a full VATS build. In which case, I think it can be okay. But I'm going to put this one into C tier overall. Fast Shot's really good. Fast Shot makes it so that you can shoot guns, uh, both guns and energy weapons. 20% faster than you otherwise would. Your action point cost is also 20% lower when you want to use those weapons in VATS, which is pretty good. Downside to this one is that your guns become 20% less accurate, which can sound like a pretty big downside, but it depends on which weapon you're using this for. In the picture, it shows more uh, submachine guns that you can use it for, and honestly, this actually hurts submachine guns more. Submachine guns generally shoot fast enough in the game. It's mostly that it affects rifles that shoot really slow. Bolt actions, lever actions, any gun that doesn't shoot that quick gets a huge bonus from this because generally guns that don't shoot that quick have really high accuracy. If you have something like a hunting rifle, it's almost pinpoint accurate. And if it's 20% less accurate, when the spread is so low, it's not going to be even that noticeable with it. But the rate of fire increase will be pretty noticeable. And again, if you're going for a VATS build, then this one is definitely one that you want. I'm going to put this one up into A tier though. Fast Shot's pretty good. Four Eyes gives you plus two perception when you're wearing glasses, but this doesn't count as a permanent plus two. This is a temporary plus two. And the downside is you get a permanent minus one to your perception. 
that's pretty bad to lose out on one of your special stats just to get a trait that doesn't really do much besides give you plus two to that trait that you've already lost. And it's a temporary plus two whenever you do have glasses, which I mean, you can wear glasses throughout the entire game, but this can potentially throw your build off if you wanted to uh, have enough perception to get certain perks. And generally, perception really isn't that great of a special stat anyway. Usually, you're just using it to actually get perked. But the effects of perception itself don't really matter. It's just the three skills that it governs, which can get you some more skill points. But there's easier ways to get skill points than just going for special stats. And the other thing that it governs is just how far away you can detect enemies from, which usually isn't a huge deal. So, yeah, four eyes, I'm just going to put it into D tier. I don't really see a point in taking four eyes ever. Good nature gives you five more points at the start of the game for speech, medicine, repair, science, and barter. However, you lose five points in all of your combat skills. So energy, weapons, guns, melee, unarmed, and explosives. So you're trading five points for five points or 25 points in total for 25 other points. This really depends on what type of build you're going for. If you want to run with like a pacifist build, then good natured is fantastic. If you want to run more of a full combat build, good natured's pretty bad. If you want to run something in between though, it can be really good, especially if you're valuing more of the skills that it is taking. So if, for example, you only wanted to use one type of weapon throughout your playthrough, you just were going to be playing guns or something like that. Losing five more points to your unarmed melee and energy weapons might be acceptable because things like science and repair are going up. So this one, I would say it's generally more pros than it is cons, but it's 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 a complete trade-off. Heavy Handed makes it so we do 20% more damage with melee and unarmed, but we lose out on 60% of our crit damage with melee and unarmed. This one really depends on what weapon you're using. Most melee weapons generally benefit more from having crits, so this one isn't that great, but if you're going to run something like the Thermic Lance or the Chainsaw, which their crits are basically non-existent and they have really high base damage, this gives them even more base damage. So if you're running a very specific build, Heavy Handed can be really good if you want to play it. If you're not doing that though, it's kind of lackluster. I'm going to put this one into B tier. Hoarder is kind of a funny one. This one makes it so you can carry 25 more weight in total. However, you suffer minus one to all of your special stats if you're not carrying at least 160 pounds. This one really depends on how much of a kleptomaniac you are in Fallout. Generally, most of us are. We're carrying around a bunch of junk that we really don't need to. Especially if you're playing on hardcore, this one can be pretty good because then your ammo starts adding up weight. You can carry around a bit more. And if you're planning on running something like heavy armor, you're probably getting pretty close to this amount of weight anyway. You don't really need it though, even on hardcore. You could go with some other perks that definitely help you out. You could stack them with us too. You could go with Burden to Bear to get you more weight, Strong Back to get you more weight, Pack Rat to have better weight management. Hoarder is kind of fun. I like it sometimes on my hardcore runs. I'm going to put it into B tier because it is kind of funny. Hump Blooded gives you 15% more damage when you're at 50% health or less. Downside is that when you are at 50% health or less, you lose out on two perception and two agility. Two perception really doesn't matter during the middle of combat. Losing out on two agility can kind of suck depending on what your agility is at because that also determines reload speed. It does affect your guns too, not your melee and unarmed though. So if you're running melee and unarmed, you could make better use of this than the other weapons. 15% more damage is a really nice damage buff to the majority of weapons in the game. And you can even help induce this status to where you could intentionally keep yourself at low health so that you keep getting hot blooded. can also be really good with a sniper build. I think I'm going to put this one into high B tier. Logan's loophole is an odd one and one that I'm kind of torn on because on the one hand it can be pretty cool with its advantage where all of your chems last twice as long and you can no longer suffer addiction raids. However, the downside is that you're locked at level 30. You can't go above level 30. Well, you can if you reroll this at like Big Mountain. That is an option. So that's one way you can do this. Having the drugs last twice as long is pretty useful, especially if you like using Psycho or Turbo or Medex or anything like that. Those can all be pretty great. If you just want to play through the game normally, you don't really have to worry about you waiting to level 30. I wouldn't really recommend taking this though. So I don't know. This one I go back and forth on as to how great I think it is. If you're just doing a speed run or some sort of challenge run throughout the game, you could just take this if you don't plan on ever getting above level 30. I think Logan's Loophole I'm going to put into C tier. It's situationally good. Up next we have Loose Cannon. Loose Cannon makes it so your attack speed with thrown weapons 
he is 30% faster. However, thrown weapons have a 25% less range. So things like explosives become kind of more dangerous to you. You could take the level two perk. I think it's like fastball or something like that, where you can throw things at least a little bit further. That can kind of offset this. And if you just want to chuck spears really, really fast, you can do that. Most people aren't really going with thrown weapons throughout most playthroughs though, because there's just not a whole lot of them. So I'm going to put this one into C tier. Up next, we have Wild Wasteland. Which, Wild Wasteland, I'm just going to put it up into S tier, because why not? Wild Wasteland is any tier that you want it to be in, depending on how much you think it actually adds to the game. This makes it so you have more wacky experiences throughout the Mojave, so you get some more references, especially game and movie references all throughout. And there is a few unique weapons that you actually do get with this. You get two different unique weapons. You get the Alien Blaster, and you get the Holy Hand Grenades. You only get a handful of grenades. Uh, you also only get a certain limited amount of shots with the alien blaster. And you are trading out the unique Gauss rifle. So if you wanted to use that, don't take Wild Wasteland. But if you just want to have a more wacky experience, it's a pretty fun trait. Up next, we have Skilled, and Skilled is absolutely S tier. Skilled is absolutely ridiculous for kind of two reasons. One is its main effect, and the other is that it's completely bugged, and you can get it up to three times throughout a playthrough, and they stack on top of one another. So Skilled makes it so you get plus five to all of your stats. So your barter, your energy weapons, your guns, your melee weapons plus five to everything, but in exchange you get 10% less experience whenever you get experience throughout the entire game. You can get this three times. You can take it once at the very start of the game, leave Good Springs and say edit your character, and then pick it a second time and it stacks. And then in Big Mountain, you can pick it once again and it stacks again. So you can have plus 15 to all skills. Small Friend gives you plus one agility, but your limbs are 25% more fragile. They can break easier. This can be kind of a pain early on, and it can be kind of a pain in New Vegas in general because explosives do a lot of damage, especially things like mines or grenades or dynamite. So getting constantly broken limbs sucks. You either have to go to a doctor to fix them. You can fix them with stim packs, at least if you're playing the game normally. If you're playing it on the hardcore difficulty, you gotta find doctor's bags and those are more difficult to find. But it is plus one to a special stat and agility is probably one of the best stats in the game to start maxing out. So I'm going to say small frame is also another S tier. And then our last trait is trigger discipline. Trigger discipline makes it so guns and energy weapons are 20% more accurate. However, they have 25% minus to their rate of fire, and they cost 20% more action points than usual to use. Trigger Discipline is pretty awful. It's probably one of the worst traits in the game. I really don't like it. It shows a rifle here, but you really don't want to put this on rifles because most rifles like that are extremely accurate, and them being slightly more accurate really doesn't help, but them being slower does hurt them a lot. This is actually better for like fully automatic weapons if you like using like the LMGs, the submachine guns, the assault rifles. This can work okay, but even then, it's still not that great because generally they're accurate enough with the amount of bullets that you're going to be firing at enemies anyway. Having them be slower just doesn't really help, and it certainly doesn't help if you want to be taking this as a action point build, if you want to be taking this as a VATS build. I'm going to put it into the bottom end of C tier because it can work on certain builds. If you're using it with like submachine guns, it can be okay. If you're using it with like LMGs, it can also be okay. If you guys would like to see more videos like this, tell me in the comments below. I might be doing perks of New Vegas as well, because New Vegas has a bunch of very odd perks, and I would like to talk about them. Thank you guys so very much for watching this. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye-bye!